Good morning. Welcome to a panel discussion of women in manufacturing in the Valleys, VIA, and Wabandi Community College region. We're really excited today to share this information with all of you um, young ladies out there that are exploring and considering different careers. I'm Cassie Blickham, the Director of Valley Education for Employment System. And most likely, if you're viewing this, it's because your middle school or high school is a member district to Valleys. And Valleys does a lot of different programming um, around careers for students and supporting your career tech ed programs in your schools. Uh, manufacturing is included in that um, category. I'd like to introduce my counterpart at Wabanzi Community College, Dean Nikisha Stepney. Thank you, Kathy. So great to be here today. Um, I'd also like to introduce Kathy Gilmore, who is the president of the Valley Industrial Association. Kathy, do you have a few words to say? I do. I, I'm going to share my screen if that's okay. I have just a little slideshow that I want to uh, share with you all because manufacturing is, is so important to us. I, I am the president of the Valley Industrial Association and the, the women speaking today are all part of our association, which represents about 200 companies in the area, ranging from DeKalb County to Cook County to up north to McHenry and then down south to Will County. And we represent manufacturers that are food, beverage, plastics, paper, metals, you, you name it. Uh, we also have professional service organizations that are part of us too, that like to work with manufacturers. So lots of great, uh, great people that come together to share, share information and uh, learn from each other. But why would you even consider a career in manufacturing? Uh, we have such an impactful industry. The, uh, manufacturing sector actually represents almost 600,000 jobs in the state of Illinois, which means one in 10 people work in the manufacturing sector, which represents over $52 billion in wage, wages and benefits. So talk about impressive. $304 billion in output is what happens in our manufacturing plants uh, and uh, what represents 12%, which is the largest share of the gross state product. And so the fun fact, take, taken alone, Illinois manufacturing economy would be the 63rd largest economy in the world. So talk about impressive. But what's even more impressive is the indirect impact because manufacturers basically help all these other industries as well. I'm thinking of the 1.5 million jobs that support manufacturers like accounting firms and banks and IT groups, marketing companies that all want to work with manufacturers. And every manufacturing job supports 1.6 other jobs in the state of Illinois. So nearly one in four Illinois workers uh, work in a related field to manufacturing. So if you take all the wages from your starting wage to your most highest level position and you average it all out together, the Illinois Manufacturing Association says there is $88,000 in average income per manufacturing worker. So obviously the longer you work, the more skills you develop, the higher wage you're going to earn. And also 92% of manufacturing employees are eligible for health insurance benefits. So it's, it's really a fantastic you know, career to be a part of. So I just wanna thank you all for your interest in this and, uh, and learning more about the great industry that we all are part of. And, uh, and again, thank you to everyone here for contributing today and, and thanks for inviting us, Cassie. Thank you, Kathy. Now I'd like to introduce Mia Salisbury. She's a seventh grader at Plano Middle School and she will be leading our panel today. Take it away, Mia. Hi, I'm Mia. As she said, um, I go to school at the middle school in Plano. Um, I'm here to ask questions and I'll just get started. So the first question is kind of like an introducing question. So I'm gonna ask you your name, your company and what you do for your company. So I'm going to start with Robin. Hi, I'm Robin Anderson and I work at MTH Pumps and I am currently working in the assembly department. I put together the guts in the pumps so that we can send them out so customers can buy them. Okay, thank you for sharing. Um, let's do Kathleen. 
Hi, um, thank you for having me. My name is Kathleen Rapp. I am a manufacturing manager at Flexco, located here in Downers Grove. Um, we manufacture belt conveyor products. So as Kathy talked before, um, how other industries are related to manufacturing, our products go into agriculture, um, logistics, because um, we hold together the conveyor belt, say in um, logistics companies or you know warehouses or um, pharmaceuticals. So our product goes out there and touches many different industries. But thank you for having me. Okay, um, Ruth, would you like to share next? Hi, my name's Ruth Salinas. I also work at Flexco with Kathleen and Sandy. Um, I'm a CNC technical lead. I work on the shop floor. And what that means is I um, program the parts, set up the parts, or set up the machines to make the parts. Um, and I do some other things, but uh, the main thing is make the product, the tools that apply the fastener to the belt. Okay, uh, Savannah. Hi, I'm Savannah and I work at MTH Pumps with Robin. Um, I'm a project engineer. Uh, before that, I was actually an intern here. Um, but in um, also from doing my own projects, I'm the manufacturing lead uh, for prototypes. So I create CNC programs and I also run the CNC itself. Sandy? Hi, my name is Sandy Parker. I work with Kathleen and Ruth at Flexco. Um, my job is a quality manager. Uh, what that means is I ensure that the product quality uh, meets our requirements and the customer requirements. So the fasteners and the tools that install the fasteners on the conveyor belts, I make sure the supplied product and the internal manufacturing processes yield good products. I also handle customer returns. And when the products do not meet quality requirements. My job is to do root cause analysis and investigate what happened and to put together a team to resolve and address the issues. And lastly, Amy. I am Amy Kettner. I'm the quality manager for U.S. operations of Frudenberg & Co. Uh, I am stationed in the Aurora Frudenberg household products. We make household products for household cleaning, such as mops, brooms, uh, buckets, and we also have a sterile division, which makes cleaning and sterilization products for hospitals and ICUs. So as you can imagine, we're really busy right now. I coordinate globally to ensure that the components that the sister companies are shipping to each other all meet the global standard, and then I oversee day-to-day -day operations here in Aurora. Okay, thank you all for sharing that question. I'm gonna get on to the next one, which is, if you had experiences as a middle or high school student that informed your career choice, please describe those experiences. And it looks like Amy wanted to share this one. I actually, in uh, high school, I was able to take shop classes. So I took wood shop and metal shop and drafting. And I actually had to sit before the board. Um, this was several years ago, I had to sit before the board to be allowed to participate in wood shop and metal shop, which is something I just don't think happens anymore. I was the only female in uh, wood shop and metal shop, and I was one of two in drafting. So it's really important to understand that although women are more and more visible in manufacturing, and we really have come into our own, that this is only a, a couple of decades old. And so it's something that women really need to make sure that we understand that we make it available and interesting to uh, people of younger ages, because depending on the region, there are still, I think, young women who have not been exposed to something that they may have a very high level of skill in. Okay, thank you for sharing that one. We're gonna get on to the next one. Why does it matter for women to have roles in manufacturing? Savannah wanted to share this one. Um, I think a company really needs diversity um, and that alone will help us innovate and create something really unique and gender not being 
the only uh, thing, you know, we need different cultures, ethnicities. Um, it's really something that um, I think still needs to improve, um, but we're getting there, so. <laughs> Okay, um, so this next question, a few people wanted to do this. So we have opportunities for multiple answers. So what do you love about your job? I'll start with Kathleen. Um, I love the challenges out on the shop floor and leading production um, members. Um, Savannah talked about gender diversity um, and that is very true, but there's diversity out on the shop floor. I, I love to reach and find that untapped talent. We promote from, we promote our employees to um, seek out other opportunities. And I love being able to reach out and work with the team members and seeing where their, um, where their desire is to move within the company. Um, and I love that we promote that here. Thank you for sharing that question. Um, Sandy, you can go next. Okay, uh, I really love uh, problem solving. So when there's an issue that arises in the plant, um, I enjoy doing root cause analysis, pulling a team of individuals together um, who have the experience and the skill set to determine what happened and what we're going to do different the next time. Um, I enjoy working with all facets. We pull together manufacturing, production, um, the purchasing group, if it's a supplied product, we try to get everybody who's um, impacted by the issue involved to really delve down deep and figure out what happened. Um, the thing I enjoy most too is coming up with a resolution that prevents it from happening again, changing our processes, uh, putting in gauging that might not have been there before or improving the gauging and the way that we inspect it. Um, I also enjoy um, our department. Uh, we have a lot of fun as a team. Um, we have a lot of equipment and uh, opportunity to use different types of equipment uh, to get us information about what is going on on the manufacturing floor. So I enjoy all of those challenges. Thank you for answering that question. Um, Ruth, you are the last person who wanted to answer this one. There's many, so I'll try to keep it short. Um, but one of the main things I love about my job is that I'm able to make anything. I can make anything. So that people that don't understand what I do, I say I can make anything. And I really can stand behind that. Um, but you work, you know, I work with Sandy a, a lot on issues and problems and solving them. It's nice to solve a problem. It's really fun when you have some, it is a challenge and sometimes it can be very frustrating. I'm not going to lie. I don't think we should about this. Um, there's a lot of frustrating things sometimes in manufacturing, but when you can work together with people and, and fix those problems, when you're done with that and you fixed it, it's a great accomplishment. It's a great feeling. Okay, thank you for everyone who answered that one. Next question is what challenges you face with your job and what could you change your job if you could? So Sandy, you can go first. Okay, well, as we've talked, there are some challenges. Um, it's not always easy to solve a problem. Not everyone always agrees about what the resolution might be. Um, different people, depending on their skills and background, will take you off into different directions. Um, I think trying to rein in the different ideas, trying to understand other people's perspectives is really important. Um, purchasing often comes from a different direction than quality. Our job is to make sure that the product comes in right. Um, they have a relationship with the vendors, so they look at it from a different perspective. So I think having that ability to think about issues from other people's perspectives and putting yourself into their shoes, uh, it helps uh, to get an understanding. It helps sometimes to just take five or 10 seconds to listen to what someone else is saying without reacting and getting emotional. Uh, some of the meetings can get emotional. Many of us are very passionate about what we do and have our strong opinions about how they should be done. So um, I think that some of those skills are really helpful, learning communication, learning to listen and hear all the facts 
Uh, one of the things that I've worked really hard with my department on is fact-based responses. A lot less challenges happen when you can come back with measurement data, when you can come back with analysis information that proves what you're saying is true versus just coming out and saying, you know, you're taking one position or another. So fact-based helps. It helps you support what you're saying and it helps other people buy into what you're saying. Okay, let's see here. Ruth, you wanted to answer this one? To back on Sandy, um, that is uh, everything, I would say everything she said, but I would add to this um, education. Um, I've gone back several times and through that education, um, one of the things, the question, I'm sorry, uh, the thing I would change is, I would, if you're considering engineering, that you, that you do a little bit of manufacturing and you get on that shop floor as well as your education, because understanding how things are made sometimes and knowing how they're really made and what you can do and what you can't do is frustrating at times on my end um, when someone hasn't experienced that. Um, and again, it's a, a working work in progress at times. Okay. Now I'm going to move on to the next question, which is what piece of advice would you give your middle or high school self if you could speak to her today? Amy, you can answer this one first. So the thing that I would tell my middle or high school self is not to necessarily pursue a vocation. I wanted to be a college professor. That was, that was what I wanted to do. And I think we, we start to pursue that vocation maybe a little too young. I think you should pursue learning for learning's sake and you should learn what you love. And so I found out that I loved to work with my hands. I loved to understand, you know, complex configurations. And that led to a career in manufacturing, which led to administrative, which actually led to me being a teacher. I actually coach and develop uh, succession planning throughout my company and help people develop their careers. So I ended up in the long run with a career that I love that's that I am excited to learn about. Like everyone has said here, I'm continually going back to school and I'm continually earning certifications. So the trick is to learn for learning's sake, to learn what you love. And what you might find is that your career will come out of that. Okay, and then we have Savannah. Do you wanna unmute yourself? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, something that I want to tell my uh, myself back then would be not to listen to people or, um, you know, they really try to bring you down. And I was employed in high school and I actually continued working that throughout college. And I had a manager who once told me, you know, I would never make it in engineering because I was a female. And uh, that just really broke me down. I started thinking, you know, is this really what I want to do is, you know, is, should I do something else? Yeah. I was just at a point in my life where I, you know, I just had to take a step back and I actually, I ended up completing, I earned my bachelor's degree and uh, here I am now, you know, doing what I like and um, I'm still trying every day to improve myself. Uh, I don't like public speaking, but here I am. So just, you know, get out of my comfort zone more. Don't be scared. You know, I was a female and a, the only female in a lot of the things I did growing up. Um, I too was in a drafting class in high school and, you know, the, the comments are gonna be there. Just, just don't give up. You'll get there one way or another, so. Okay, and then we have, sorry, Kathleen. Um, the advice I would give myself, that I did give myself and I listened, um, was not to limit myself. Um, because when I started off in high school, it was in manufacturing. And at that time, I was thought to just only stay on the production floor. And that there's nothing wrong with that if that's what you like to do. But I, I wanted more and I continued to learn and, and take classes myself. Um, and I worked my way up 
in that manufacturing company from being a press operator to running a, um, a printing press to then working in the dark room for graphic arts. Um, and my career has circled back around back to manufacturing. And I started off in customer service, which I loved because I, I love helping people. But now I'm a manufacturing manager. So just don't limit yourself. I went back to school. I made sure I got my degree. And now I'm out on the shop floor. Um, and Ruth said it before. I go out there and I've learned how to run these presses. I've learned how to run these machines. Knowledge is everything. And it's not just about the knowledge of making it. It's the knowledge of knowing what tools the people on the floor need to make their job better. Um, so overall, just continue to learn and never limit yourself. Okay, and then we have Robin. I, if I could talk to my prior person when I was in junior high or high school, I would say definitely don't stop school. Go to college because I didn't go to college. And when I did decide to go back, I was 54 years old. Now I'm experiencing not only am I the only female in all my classes because I'm doing the manufacturing classes, but I'm also old enough to be some other grandmother or their mother. So it's kind of more challenges and it would have been better off doing it at a younger age where I could have enjoyed the career longer. Thank you. Yep. Um, Ruth. Um, the one thing I would say is don't give up to myself. Um, I just want to say this because I know there's people out there that have the same issues I did. I had a hard time in school. Um, everything did not come easy to me and it was very hard. And I too went back. I was in my 30s when I went back to college, but I went to trade school when I was in my 20s. Um, but even in trade school, uh, I will admit this, and I don't know if Kathleen probably doesn't know or anybody know. I uh, failed uh, one of my classes. I actually did well in the class, but you had to pass a test. And I failed that test and I uh, bawled my eyes out and I did not know if I wanted to continue on in the trade because I just didn't think I was smart enough and I didn't give up. Uh, someone luckily picked me up and helped me go and I went back and I passed the test. It took me two times to pass it, but I passed it. So if you really, really want to do it, you can do it. And even though school is hard, you should go back because it, it does pay off in the end. And even though when you think you fail, you still can go back and you can do it again. So don't give up. Okay, and now I'm going to ask the last question. Um, so Robin, since you are also a student in studying manufacturing at Wabanzi CC, can you please share why you chose to go back to college while also working? I decided to go back to college to get more education about the business that I'm in and to further myself in the company because the, the department I work in right now is assembly and that is like pretty much walk-in job you know, and I want to get on the machines and start doing actually what I'm going to school for is CNC programming. So in order to do that, I've got to start as a machine operator and then work my way up to the programming stages. But there's a lot more to just the manufacturing than just the assembly department. And that's what I wanted to do. And that's why I did it. Okay, and then that is it for our questions. I'm gonna go hand this back to Cassie. Thank you so much, Mia. I enjoyed um, hearing everyone's responses to the questions as I hope our viewers at home or school or hybrid did too. Um, especially, I wanted to say, Ruth, I really appreciate you sharing that all paths aren't linear and that failure um, 
failure is acceptable, it's okay, and we learn from it. I think that's something um, that our students really need to hear right now. Um, things are tough. Um, it's hard to learn from home at times. Um, it's hard to be going to school during a pandemic. And, um, you know, we will all get through this. And just like Ruth said, um, and several panelists said, uh, don't give up on yourself. Um, I also, you know, think this group of women here um, would always, uh, if it was able to do a follow up conversation with a student or shoot an email to a student and, and talk about more details here, I think that that's probably something everyone here is willing to do um, as uh, everyone here is very invested in seeing more women in manufacturing. I wanna thank you, Mia, for hosting our panel. Um, and then I wanted to encourage all of you young ladies in middle and high school that are watching this panel today um, to talk to your counselors and your parents and your teachers about what the programs are at your middle and high school that correspond to the things you heard here today. So Amy shared a number of the classes that she took in middle and high school, as did others. Those course titles might look different now. Um, you know, those course titles might be something like metalworking and manufacturing um, or construction trades for the woods, you know. So follow up with your teacher that asked you to view this or your counselor and talk to your parents too. Um, and, and do have those conversations when it comes time to do course registration. Um, and then Nikisha, I'd like if you could just take a couple minutes. I, I know um, Robin talked about her experience in Wabanzi's programs, but if you could just kind of let our viewers, our middle and high school viewers um, know uh, how Wabanzi offers manufacturing programs and, and would love to have more female representation in those programs. Absolutely. Thank you, Cassie. So for those of you that are viewing, if this is a career field that you're interested in exploring, take advantage of all those opportunities that are available to you in your middle and high school. Um, talk to your counselor, as Cassie said, to your parents. Reach out to any one of us that is on this panel because we'd be more than happy to help you. While um, there are a lot of high wage, high growth and in demand career opportunities that are available in manufacturing, and we know that representation matters. And so this is something that you're interested in. I echo what the panelists said. Don't give up, um, love what you learn, pursue the things that make you happy. And we all know that the demand for these skilled workers in these positions persists. So at Wabanzi Community College, we're committed to providing opportunities for students to engage in career and technical education, including advanced manufacturing. At our Sugar Grove campus, we offer programming in automation technology, industrial maintenance, machine tool technology, welding, computer-aided design and drafting and engineering. So if those are programs that you are interested in, we have opportunities for you to further explore those career opportunities. In addition, to show our commitment to our community, we've recently reimagined our Plano campus and it is now our innovation and design center. At that campus location, students have the opportunity to engage in welding technology, computer-aided design and drafting, industrial maintenance, and we also offer a cybersecurity program. So we're committed to making sure that we provide opportunities for students to learn um, and for you to be connected to instructors who are practitioners who worked in the industries that you're interested in. So they can answer questions for you, provide you information, share their wealth of knowledge with you. Um, and then, you know, it's just important for you to continue to learn. So don't let anyone stop you as the panelists have said. Um, utilize all of your uh, opportunities to engage with this curriculum. And um, we welcome you. I'd be more than happy to provide you or your family, your counselor, your institution, a, a tour of the Plano campus or any of our facilities. And, and again, open door to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you, Nikisha. So this is our sign off. Um, we're glad that you watched our panel. We're so excited that you are a woman or a young woman that might have a career interest in manufacturing. Along with this video that goes to your counselor and teacher will also be some follow up information, including um, links to VIA, links to um, Wabanzi's um, site, including Plano and Sugar Grove campuses where there's you know, multiple programs. Um, also links to each of the companies um, featured here today by company representatives. Um, and then my contact information will also be there. And we would encourage any young lady watching this um, to follow up with us and to reach out. Um, there's, a, there's a lot going on in the Valley, the VIA, Wabanzi sphere. And 
we'd love to have any young ladies watching today um, start to take part in those activities. So I'm gonna sign off. Everyone wanna give a big wave? And I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording.